Okay, so this is page 9 in our binders. I've already pre-labeled page 9 on our binders. And I am sorry, there was this little uh, curly brace got put over the words. I fixed mine. Um, sorry, you guys can't fix yours. It's in printer ink. Oops. Okay. This is, uh, yesterday we multiplied decimals, so now we are going to divide decimals. Um, so how to, um, the very first thing is we're going to actually make the divisor a whole number by moving the divisor, by the way, remember, is the number on the outside of the house. Number outside of the house, okay? So uh, we're moving the number outside of the, ha the decimal. We're moving the decimal to the right in order to make the number outside of the house, the divisor, a whole number. After we're done with that, we're going to move the decimal and the dividend the same number of times. It might not necessarily make both of them a whole number. The one that has to be a whole number is the number on the outside of the house or the divisor. The dividend, the dividend is the number on the inside. Okay. Now, um, by moving the decimal, what we're essentially doing is multiplying by 10. So um, if we had a divisor of 3.8, and we were going into a number 0.64 by moving that decimal one time we've really multiplied this number by 10 and if we multiply this number by 10 we also have to multiply this number by 10 so if you don't move them the same number of times then you're not working with the same multi or same division problem so then you could have 32 into 6.4 now, um, I actually did the second step just now. Um, I placed the decimal above the long division setup in place for the quotient. So this is where your quotient's going to go, just like normal. Now we just get to divide like normal. Um, just in case you have forgotten, because it is the brand new school year and we have slept a lot during the summer, this is how you divide like normal. Um, my biggest hint for people divide like normal. And this helps you guys learn your multiplication facts to um, rewrite the problem as long division. And then, this is the big part, list the multiplies of 0 through 9 of the divisor for the number on the outside of the house, right? So in the problem that I wrote, I'd list the numbers um, for 32. I would say 32 times 0, times 1, times 2, times 3, times 4, times 5, times 6, times 7, times 8, times 9. This takes an insanely long time, especially if you have more than one digit in your divisor. However, it makes the rest of the division process really, really quickly. Um, go by really, really quickly. So 32 times 0 is, well, anything times 0 is 0. 32 times 1, anything times 1 is itself. 32 times 2, 32 times 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 3 is 6, so 64. Then I've got 32 times 3. Okay, 32 times 3, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9, so 32 times 3 is 96. 32 times 4, and you can go back to repeated adding if you want. 32 times 4 would be whatever it was times 3 plus another 32. So 6 plus 2 is 8. 9 plus 3 is 12. So 32 times 4 is 128. 32 times 5 is 5 times 2 is 10. 3 times 5 is 15. Plus 1, 16. Okay. Um, 32 times 6. Um, you guys get the idea here. I'm going to start breaking up the number between um, 32 to say 30 plus 2. 32 times 6 would be 6 times 30, which is easier for me because I know 6 times 3 is 18. I know 6 times 3 is 18. So 6 times 30 is 18 one with a 0 at the end, um, end so 180. And then th uh, 6 times 2 is 12. 
so 32 times 6 would be the 180, and the 12 added together were 192. 7 times 30 would be 210, so I've got 210. 7 times 2 is 14, and 210 plus 14 makes 228. For 32 times 8, I know that 8 times 30 is 240, because 3 times 8 is 24, with the 0 at the end. And then 8 times 2 is 16. Well, 240 and 16, that would be 256. And then times 9. 9 times 30 is 270. 9 times 2 is 18. 270 plus 18 is 288. So that's the important stuff right there. So I'm asking myself, how many times, how many times will the divisor, so the number outside, 32, how many times will 32 go into the first place value of the dividend is 6? So how many times will 32 go into 6 without spilling over? Well, 32 is much larger than 6, so 32 goes into 6 zero times. How did I get zero? Zero times. And then 32 times 0 is 0, so I put a 0 underneath the number, and I can subtract. 6 minus 0 is 6, and I'm going to bring down the next number. So now I'm going back and asking myself, how many times will 32 go into 64 without spilling over? I'm looking at my list of multiplication problems, and I see a 64. 32, the divisor, fits into 64 exactly two times. So now I multiply 2 times 32, and I'm writing the product below the space, and then I can subtract. There's no more remaining numbers, and I don't have to bring down a 0 because my remainder is 0, so my process is finished. So 32 into 6.4 is 0.2 which means 3.2 into 0.64 is 0.2, because those are the same two problems. Again, just like uh, with multiplication, if I have the same sign with my uh, divisor and dividend, I'll have a positive quotient. So if I have positive divided by positive or negative divided by negative, that's going to be a positive quotient. If I have different signs, the quotient will be negative. So if I have positive divided by negative, or negative divided by positive, that quotient is negative. We know that the divisor is the number outside of the house, the dividend is the number inside of the house. I'm thinking with uh, your context clues, you now know that quotient is the answer in a division problem. Okay, so now let's look at some examples. We're going to start with, um, we need to rewrite the problem as long division. So this is negative 5 divided by 2.5. Since this is negative divided by negative, those signs are the same, which means we have a positive quotient. Okay, um, the first number goes inside the house and the second number goes on the outside. Okay, so I've got 2.5 going into 5. We don't like to have our decimals in the divisor, so we're going to move that decimal until we have a whole number, which is just one time. If you move the decimal from 2.5 once, then you have 25, which means I have to move the decimal from 5 one time. It doesn't look like there is a decimal in 5, which means it's at the very, very end or behind the ones place, which is five. So I'm going to move that over once. When I move that over once, I'm going to put a zero in its spot. So five became 50 after I multiplied both of those numbers by 10, because I moved them over, I moved the decimal over one time. Okay. Um, now I'm going to list out all of my 
multiplication problems of 25 from 0 to 9. So 25 times 0 times 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 times 7 times 8 and times 9. 25 times 0 is 0. 25 times 1 is 25. I'm thinking like quarters. If I have two quarters, I have 50 cents. If I have three quarters, I have 75 cents. If I have four quarters, I have one dollar, which is 100 cents. If I have five quarters, I have one dollar and 25 cents. If I have six quarters, I have a dollar and 50 cents. If I have seven quarters, I have a dollar and 75 cents. If I have eight quarters, I have two dollars. And if I have nine quarters, I have two dollars and 25 cents. So those are my, um, my multiplication problems of 25 from 0 through 9. So um, now I'm ready to do the division process. So I'm asking myself, how many times will the divisor or 25 go into each place value? How many times will 25 go into 5 without spilling over? I start at 0, I go to 25, and already I've spilled over, which means I have to go back here, which was 0 times. Now I multiply, and I'm going to write the product below. So 0 times 25 is 0. And now I subtract, and then subtract. 5 minus 0 is 0. Sorry, 5 minus 0 is 5. And then I bring down the remaining numbers to make a new dividend. Okay. Now I've got 25 into 50. So I go back to how many times will the divisor go into, how many times will 25 go into 50 without spilling over? 0, 25, 50, 75 is too big. Well, 50 is actually just right, so it's two times. I'm going to write the number of times it went in above the right place value. Then I multiply 2 times 25 is 2 times 25 is 50 going to subtract 50 minus 50 is 0 and then I'm going to bring down any other numbers that I need but there's not any other numbers okay I'm going to repeat until I'm finished but because my remainder is 0 I am finished which means that this is a positive 0 2 that 0 is not important because it's not behind a decimal this is just a positive 2 then so negative 5 divided by negative 2.5 is 2 I'm ready to look at another division problem. Um, I would try to pause this video and write this as a long division problem. I would try that on your own. Hopefully you've done that. Remember the first number or the number on top, 4.32, would go in the house. So 4.32 and then 1.2 goes on the outside. Okay. So I have rewritten this as long division, but there's decimals. So I need to make the divisor a whole number by moving the decimals over. The divisor is the number on the outside. If I move the decimal over one time, then I'll have 12, which is a whole number. Since I moved it over one time in the divisor, in the dividend, I'm going to take the decimal and move it over one time. So 4.32 will become 43.2. Um, now I can divide like normal. I've rewritten the problem as long division. Now I need to list the factors, sorry, the multiples of 12 from 0 through 9. 12 is a fact that we should know, so I'm going to go kind of fast on it. 12 times 0 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Twelve times zero is zero. Twelve times one is twelve. Twelve times two is twenty-four. Twelve times three is thirty-six. Twelve times four is forty-eight. Twelve times five is sixty. Twelve times six is seventy-two. Twelve times seven is eighty-four. Twelve times eight is ninety-six. And twelve times nine is one hundred eight. So these are my uh, multiples of twelve, which is the divisor. Okay. 
Now I'm going to ask myself, how many times will 12 go into 4 without spilling over? 12 won't go into 4. And I'm actually really tired of um, writing the 0 and dropping it down, so I'm just not going to write anything, because then I'm going to end up now with 43. Wait. 43. So now I'm saying, how many times will 12 go into 43? without spilling over. So we've got 0, 12, 24, 36, 48 is spilling over, so I have to go back to the 336. So this is 12 will go into 36 three times. 12 will go into 43 three times without spilling over. So I'm going to put the 3 above the last place value in 43. 3 times 12, or 12 times 3, is 36. Now I can subtract. I can't take 6 from 3, so I have to borrow from the 4. That makes the 4 become a 3. And now I've got 13 minus 6. 13 minus 6 is 7. And then 3 minus 3 is 0. I forgot to put the decimal above the house. And I can drop down the next number, which is 2. I'm dropping down the remaining numbers to make a new dividend. So I'm saying, well, how many times will 12 go into 72? 0, 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72 is exactly that. So 12 will go into 72 exactly 6 times, because 6 times 12 is 72. And now there's no more numbers to bring down. I know I'm done. So my quotient is 3. 4.32 divided by 1.2, those are both positive numbers. Since I had a positive divided by a positive, I know that the quotient is also positive. Okay. Now looking at 8.2 divided by negative 4. So I'm going to uh, make a note that this is positive divided by negative. Those signs are different, which means the quotient is negative. Now I'm going to rewrite this problem. Top dog, first um, person home that goes in the house. 8.2. And then there's negative 4. There's 4 on the outside. Okay. Um, the divisor's already a whole number, so the only thing I have to make sure I'm doing is moving the decimal above the dividend set up. Um, sorry, I've, I've done that. I need to place the decimal above the long division set up into the place for the quotient. So our quotient ends up getting written right here. I'm going to just move the decimal up there so it's already kind of aligned. Okay, and the divisor is 4, so I have to list out all of my multiples of 4 between zero, for 0 through 9. So I'll have 4 times 0 times 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 times 7, times 8, and times 9. 4 times 0 is 0. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. Again, this is one that we should know already. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 6 is 24. 4 times 7 is 28. 4 times 8 is 32. And 4 times 9 is 36. Since the divisor was already a whole number, I didn't have to move the decimal any at all. And now I can just start asking myself, well, how many times will the divisor, 4, go into 8? 4 goes into 8 two times. 2 times 4 is 8, so I multiplied. I wrote the product below the place value I used. Now I need to subtract. 8 minus 8 is 0. And I bring down the remaining numbers to make a new dividend. How many times, so I repeat the process, how many times will 4 go into 2? 4 doesn't go into 2, so I'm going to put a 0 above, a 0 goes um, above the place value that I used. Now I multiply 0 times 4 is 0. I wrote the product. Now I subtract. 2 minus 0 is 0. And I need to bring down the, sorry, 2 minus 0 is not 0. 2 minus 0 is 2. And I'm going to bring down any remaining numbers to make a new dividend. 
There are no remaining numbers, but I'm also not done. So I'm going to carry down the zero, or I'm going to make a zero and carry it down. So now I have four, and instead of going into two, I have four going into 20. The four fits into 20 exactly five times. So I'm gonna write the five over the last spot used for 20. And now I can multiply four times, sorry, five times four is 20. 20 minus 20 is zero. So um, 8.2 divided by four was 2.05, two and five hundredths. And I know the quotient's negative because we had different signs for our um, dividend and divisor. All right, and now we've got one more problem. We have 32 divided by a half. Ne sorry, negative 32 divided by 0.5 a half. So I've got a negative number divided by a positive number. Since those signs are different, I know that the quotient should be negative. Okay, and I'm gonna set this up now. Um, 32 goes inside and the 0.5 goes on the outside. I've got to move the decimal for the divisor until I have a whole number. So, so far that's, I just had to move that one time. There's no, uh, there's no decimal in uh, 32, so I know it's at the end. So I'm moving that over once to make um, a new place value zero spot. Essentially, I've multiplied both of these numbers by 10. Since I've multiplied both of them, I haven't really changed the problem. I've just made it easier for me. So 5 into 320. Now before I begin, I'm going to uh, rewrite, sorry, I'm going to list the multiples of 5 from 0 through 9. So 5 times 0 times 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6 times 7 times 8 and times 9. Five, usually most of you know anyways. Five times zero is zero, times one is five, five times two is 10, five times three is 15, five times four is 20, five times five is 25, five times six is 30, five times seven is 20, 35, five times eight is 40, and five times nine is 45. So now I'm ready to actually do the division part of this. Um, I'm going to ask myself, how many times will 5 go into 3 without spilling over? And 5 goes into 3 zero times. So now I'm looking at 5 into 32. So 5 goes into 32. 5 goes into 32. Well, 35 is too big, so I go to the next one below, which is 30. So 5 goes into 32 six times without spilling over. So I'm going to put a 6 over the last part of the 2 from the 32. And I've got 6 times 5 is 30. 32 minus 30 is 2. And I drop down the remaining numbers to make my new dividend. And now we have... Um, 5 going into 20. 5 goes into 20 exactly 4 times. So 5 times 4 is 20. And there's a 0 remainder. So I don't have to bring anything down. Um, that means then 32 divided by 0. 0.5 was 64. Okay. Um, Again, this is mostly a review from last year in sixth grade. The only difference I think is that we're adding in positive and negative signs. Um, so this shouldn't be too terrible for you. If you need help, please do not hesitate to reach out to me before or after class. School, send me an email, send me a school message, or rewatch this video as many times as you need to. Um, this was page nine, our notes. Page 10 has 10 division problems for you, um, written in various different ways. Um, and that's all I've got for you in this video.